John G. Lake, promoted by Pentecostal and charismatic leaders, is a great man of God who healed over 100,000 people during his lifetime, was arrested in August of 1922 for impersonating a police officer. This is part one of a two-part series called John G. Lake, The Impersonator. You're going to want to keep watching. John G. Lake, 1870-1935, to 1935, was a deacon in John Alexander Dowie's church in Zion City, Illinois. Some of his family members were featured in several issues of Dowie's magazine, Leaves of Healing, as a testimony to the prophet's healing power. Dowie was exposed as a fraud in 1906. Charles Fox Parham went to Zion City seeking an opportunity to gain a following, claiming to be sent directly from God to rescue the citizens of Zion from the clutches of the new regime. Parham quickly gained several hundred followers. John G. Lake was one of them. After Parham left Zion, Lake and another man by the name of Tom Hesmohawk became unofficial leaders of the group of Parhamites. Both conveniently left Zion, however, and moved to Indiana soon after the murder of Letitia Greenhoff and Frank Crow by members of the Paramite group. In 1908, Lake and Hesmohawk left the United States and headed for South Africa, living as missionaries there until 1913. After returning to the United States, Lake moved to Spokane where he opened his Divine Healing Institute and in 1921, he became the general overseer and apostle of the church at Spokane. He also organized the church at Portland in 1920, and this is where the story begins. In 1921, at the first annual conference of the International Apostolic Congress, Apostle Lake and Bishop McKinturf, leaders of the Church of Spokane, claimed that their church was the one and only church established by God. The resolutions of the IAC says this, Resolved, that we do now declare that we are that very church, which has come down through the ages, and we do here and now pledge ourselves to forget all differences which the ages have fostered, all sects and creeds, Protestant and Catholic and Jewish, and that we will carry to all men the true religion of our God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and that the name of the church is now, ever was, and ever will be simply the church, that the Bible is our rule and guide as it is interpreted and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, that we protest against all divisions among God's people, whether Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, or of any other name or country. And we further declare that we belong to the same church to which Enoch, Abraham, Elijah, Elisha, Isaac, Jacob, and the prophets, Moses, Joshua, the three Hebrew children, Daniel, David, the apostles, and all the mighty men of God belonged in all ages, that there never has been nor will there ever be any other true church. In the same meeting, McKinturf introduced this resolution. Dr. R. N. McKinturf introduced a resolution asking the church to make a declaration of faith, declaring it to be the one and only church established by God. However, just one year later, the one and only church established by God would be filled with factions, violence, and fraud, eventually leading to Apostle Lake impersonating a police officer in order to gain control of the church property. It all started with a fist fight. On June 13, 1922, Lake ordered McKinturf to turn over the keys to the church. A fight broke out between the two parties. The day was a strenuous one, beginning with a fist fight between members of the Lake and McKinter factions for possession of the keys of the church. J.W. Owen's janitor standing by the bishop and refusing to give up his keys, and Sam Crane representing the Lake forces were arrested by the police who interfered. Crane raised a $25 bond and was back for the afternoon session. 
Owens was on hand last night, although he spent part of the day in jail, unable to raise his bond. Fight for keys to church. Two men are jailed. Two men were jailed this morning after a fight to gain possession of the keys of the church at Spokane, Maine, and Lincoln, where John G. Lake, apostle of the church, ordered Bishop McKinturf in charge of the Spokane organization to surrender his charge. Sam Crane, representative of the John G. Lake factions, and a Mr. Webb, janitor of the church, were the men jailed after police interfered. The reason for the fight was that Lake ordered McKinturf suspended on the ground of mishandling funds. It was McKinturf, however, that won the day, and Lake ended up stepping down and was brought up on charges himself, including misconduct with his private secretary. The charges, which grew out of his alleged improper conduct in association with Miss Harriet Graham, were read at the services yesterday, but the evidence upon which they were based and which was given before the conference last week was withheld. Bishop McKinturf, Bishop of the Spokane Diocese, answered the charges of Dr. Lake last week by saying that he is ready at any time for an investigation of his record. He also brought out that according to a law of the church, all church property must remain in the hands of the church unless otherwise disposed of by the property committee. This, he said, would prevent Dr. Lake from disposing of any church property. But Lake wanted control of the property, and he would use any means to get it, even if it meant impersonating a police officer. Lake was arrested on August 25th in Spokane after conducting a funeral. Reverend Mr. Lake arrested. Portland man charged with impersonating an officer. Spokane, Washington, August 25th. Reverend John G. Lake of Portland, Oregon, was at liberty on $100 bond here today following his arrest as he left the pulpit of a local church last night on a charge of impersonating an officer. The warrant was issued following a disagreement several weeks ago between Mr. Lake and local ministers of the church, which resulted in a break after Mr. Lake had attempted unsuccessfully to take charge of the local property. Later, he organized another congregation here. Reverend John G. Lake came to Portland several years ago from Spokane and founded the Church of Portland. During his stay here, he has built up quite a following, and his friends believe him capable of effecting miraculous cures. During his activity in Portland, he has come in conflict with the city health authorities several times. Charismatic and Pentecostal leaders love to hold up Lake as a great man of God. But great men of God don't use fraud in order to gain power for themselves as Lake did here. And this isn't the only time Lake impersonated someone. Years later, he posed as an Arab faith healer named Abdul bin Shinandar to his unsuspecting congregation. But we'll talk about that in part two of Lake the Impersonator.